Hi, this is Precalculus. Note section 1.7 transformations. If you've been watching Transformers lately, you know what a transformation is. Well, maybe not. Really, what we say is that a transformation is a change. And so what we do is we take something that's in its original form and we're going to change it. And that's what we're going to be doing with what we call parent functions. And then we also have something that's called translations. The difference between translations and transformations is that translations is a form of transformations. And translations are a slide. So the change is a slide. So the very first ones is that we would summarize the translation, which is a rigid transformation. So in other words, the shape does not change, but it is a change that occurs to the parent function. So I want you to go through and graph these and then see if you can summarize each one to see how it changed from this original. So for this one, summarize how it changed from this one. And then if you go over here, how did this graph change from this parent function? This is called a parent function right here. Okay, go ahead and try that, pause, and I'll come back with some more information. So if you look at this first one, what, did, what happened? Well, I think you can see that everything went up two. So we took the original f of x and then we added two to every y coordinate. So this f of x changed the x squared by changing it and adding up two. So all my y values went up by two. All my y values for this one went down by four. So it shifted the graph down four. So these are all translations. I like to say a translation is just a slide. And then this one, what did this do? Well, obviously it moved it right too. Why? Well, when it's nested inside here, what I like to say is what value of x makes this zero? In other words, brings it back to the zero, zero point. Well, it would be two. If I plug in two here, that brings me back to zero, zero. So I think of positive two when I look at this and what would be the translation. So everything shifted right to this one. What happened? Left three. So I look inside the parentheses, what value of x made this all zero? Negative three, so that's gonna be what my shift is. Left three or negative three. And then what would happen to this one? Well, what value of x makes this zero? So that would be a right three, and then this would be a up four. So those are the different transformations that we do have. Summarize if you can in your own words what would happen and then I'll scroll down here and show you what I have so pause for a second and then come back and look at what I have okay so here we go summarize the translations that have taken place for H and K so H greater than zero is shifted right H units now when I say H is greater than zero that means that inside here H is positive which means that it's X minus four so if it's x minus 4, yeah, we go right 4 units, okay? If h is negative, this becomes minus a negative, so it's actually x plus that. Regardless, just set this equal to 0, and if the value is positive, we go right. If it's negative, we go left. That's the easy way. Then this k just hangs out here, and you do it as it is. So then it's up k or down k, depending upon if k is positive or negative. All right, moving on. Number 2. Those are the answers. We don't want to see those answers. So for number two, these are non-rigid transformations, which means that they are going to stretch or dilate, people say, or they can shrink, do different things like that. So what I want you to do is take this parent function again and go ahead and graph each one of these and then summarize. It's best if you do this yourself, so pause. Don't wait for me. Pause and summarize yourself and tell me what happened to each one of these graphs. Did you pause? I hope so. Okay, so here's x squared, and if we take 2x squared, well, what does that do to all my values? Well, what we can do is we can possibly set up a little t-chart with x, and then we have f of x. Oh, I, I, I should change this because this would have been g, uh, g of x. So let me do it this way. x, x squared, and then 2x squared. So this will be each one of my functions. And I'm going to fill this in. So we, if we have these scalars, it gets a little bit trickier. So I do a t-chart. I can go x, x squared, and 2x squared. If I plug this in, 0, I get out 0 under my parent function. But I also get it for my new function. 
So if I plug in 1, what just happened to my y values here with respect to the parent function compared to my new transformation? Well, it got bigger, much bigger. And this number is greater than 1. And this is what we would call, I'm looking at this right now, y equals ax squared. So in this case, a is greater than 0. What happened to my function? Well, I think that you can see that it got attracted closer to the y-axis, and that's what we're going to say. Some people say it's got skinnier. Well, skinnier is more arbitrary, so we want to say that this got sucked towards the y-axis. That's what we're going to say. Okay, so let's go through some of these other ones. Uh, this the next one, what happened? What happened to all my y-coordinates? Well, it got changed. It's opposite. And so this is reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so if I put a negative in there at the beginning, from my parent function, it's going to reflect everything over the x-axis. This one, if I take a one-half and put it inside, well, these two are very similar. Uh, this one has a coefficient of one-half. This one has a coefficient of one-fourth. Regardless, what happens is that um, they both get stretched towards the x-axis or get stretched out or pushed away from the y-axis, you could say. Okay, so I'm going to set up a t-chart for both of those and then we'll look at it. Now with both of these, if I use this same formula here, with this case, a is less than, oh, I should have said 1 here, sorry, a greater than 1 there. You get stretched towards the y-axis or suck towards the y-axis. If a is between 1 and 0, what's going to happen is that you're going to be pushed away from the y-axis and towards the x-axis. And I'll summarize this one a little bit more later. So if I look at this uh, function here, it flattens off. Yeah, it flattens off, but what's really happening? Well, it gets pushed away from the y-axis. This one, too, gets pushed away from the y-axis relative to our parent function. And so that's what you got to keep in mind. And why I use this y equals x squared, your book, uh, the Stitzen Ziger book, uses the square root function. And so you get a different slant on that because it does get skinnier, but uh, it, it doesn't work the same way as what you think when you say skinnier or wider. So be careful with that language. I'll give you a more specific summary in a second. Okay, then this one, what happens to this one? Well, here we have our translation from before, and we have this scalar, which is a 3. What's that going to do? Well, the scalar makes it go approach the y-axis. gets attracted to the y-axis. So, yes, it, in this case, it would be skinnier. But then it's also shifted to this new center point, 3, 4. Okay, so a lot of things going on there. So let's see if we can summarize this. In the Stitzinger book, on page 126, you can look at this. This would be reflections. And so this would be uh, a situation where we look at what happens when we put a negative in front of a f of x. So, for instance, this would be like graphing negative x squared and the stuff that we just did. Well, that would reflect over the x-axis because it multiplies all the y-coordinates by negative 1. If we put a negative inside, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's going to reflect across the y-axis by multiplying all the x-coordinates of the graph by negative 1. So it's switching the x-coordinates rather than the y-coordinates. Okay? Then if we go to page 130, this is another theorem. This is y equals a times f of x. So this is like our a times x squared. What happens? Well, if a is greater than 0, we say that the graph of f has undergone a vertical stretching. So it's going towards the, pulled towards the y-axis, you could say. And if it, A is between 0 and 1, we say the graph has undergone a vertical shrinking, which is a compression contraction by a factor of 1 over A. All right, so there's different ways to look at this, but that's what's happening, okay? Uh, we're probably not going to get too particular, but you do have to take points and be able to modify points from the parent curve to the new curve, and we'll be working with those situations. Okay, here's what I put for this thing right here with the A. 
A is greater than 1, we stretch vertically or pull towards the y-axis, and between 0 and 1, shrink vertically, pushed away from the y-axis. If A is less than 0, we flex over the x-axis. So that's a few summaries there. Okay, now let's get into these examples here. We want to take some of these graphs and we want to shift them by what the factor, I'm sorry, whatever number we have out here. Okay, so in other words, we're going to do some different transformations. So this is what we would call our parent function right here. And so if you look at this, you're probably going to say, oh, we just move everything up three. Well, in fact, that's what you do. So if I do move up everything by three, I'm going to pause this and graph this. You do it too. We're going to take, so we moved everything up by three, f of x plus three. So that's what it looks like. And so if I look at my domain here, my domain, so my domain stays the same, negative 4 to 6. But what happens to my range? Well, my range previously was from negative 5 up to 1. Well, what happened to all those values? Well, everything shifted up by 3 for just the range. So I'm now at negative 2 up to 4, negative 2 to 4. Okay, so the range would change under this condition, but the domain does not. What happens as we move to this one? Well, remember that this one would be a shift left, and this is of our original parent function, left by 3. So if I do that, remember that x value that makes it 0 would be negative 3, so left 3. So I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to move it left 3. 1, 2, 3. Same thing. So I can move all of the points left by 3, and then we can see what happens to our graph. I think I got that. You double check, make sure that I did that right. And there's my graph. Now what happens to my domain? Well, this is tricky. Uh, but yeah, what I'm doing is I'm taking, and I can read this for values that are less than what I had originally. Originally it was from negative 4 to 6. Now I can go from negative 7 up to 3. But I don't have any other information that I can deal with. So my domains change by left of 3. However, my range is the same thing as my parent, which was from negative 5 up to 1. Okay? So now you're seeing what's happening in the domain and range. Well, if I change the x's, then we change the domain. If we change the y's, then we change the range. Okay, what did we say about this one? How does this one reflect? Well, all my y values are going to be the opposite of what they were before. So if I'm down here now, negative 5, well, I'm going to be up here at 5. And if I'm here at 1, I'm going to be here, 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 and here. So what happened to my graph? Well, this one is reflected over the x-axis which is the same thing as y equal to 0. What's going to happen to this one now? Well, wherever I had a 1, for instance, if I plugged in a 1 and I got a, out a 1 here, it's going to be I'm plugging in a negative 1, I'm going to get out 1. Well, that was a bad example, but that's what I'm going to get. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to reflect around the y-axis this time. And so this line becomes the same. However, I'm going to go and reflect this one out over here. So this is that point right there. And then at negative 4, I go down here, and then I get this right here. So this one would be reflected over the y-axis. If you run into trouble with this, set up a t-chart with your x and your f of x, and then your f of negative x, Set up a t-chart like this and plug in some points, one by one. You can do one by one and it works. Okay, now what about this one? Well, this one I might have to set out a t-chart. I'm going to set that up. So here's my t-chart. You probably want to fill this in yourself and pause this. And you got to process this, so I highly recommend that you stop this and pause. But however, if I take negative 4 and I get out negative 5, well, what happens if I take that negative 5 and double it? Well, I'm going to go out to negative 10. So what's this going to be doing overall? 
Well, yes, it's going to be stretching it vertically. Okay, stretching it vertically. Now, when I said towards the y-axis, I'll show you what that means after I graph this a little bit. It, it holds a little bit less water when I say that. But yes, this one would be a 2, 2, then a negative 4, and then a 0. So what happened to this? Well, it's stretched vertically. Hopefully you can see what we mean now by stretched vertically. It's stretched out this way. Okay. Now, why don't you try this one and see what happens with this one. You can go through a similar process, but you need to plug in things a little bit different. So try to set up a little t-chart and see what this is going to look like. Okay, when we try this one, what happens is that I need a negative 4 will give me a negative 5. But what happens when I'm dealing with this? So if I use negative 4, that would give me negative 2 for my 0.5x. Well, that's not going to span this whole thing. So depending upon what your domain requirements are, I could possibly even go out to negative 8. And with negative 8, 0.5x is negative 4. Oh, if I plug in negative 4, I know I get negative 5. And so this value plugged in my f function would give me negative 5. So from here, I'm reading off the x-coordinates from this graph. Negative 4 gives me negative 5. So here, if I had negative 2, ooh, negative 2 would give me negative 1. And so really, I need to kind of hit on this negative 1 part. That would be a negative 2. Gives me an x value, kind of, of negative 1. Plugged into my f function, then it would give me a 1. Same thing over here, a 2 would give me a 1. Plug in 1. So if I take my value at 1, that would be 1. Okay, so remember that these are equivalent to my x values that are on this graph, this middle column. Okay, now I think you can finish it. So what happened to my graph? Well, it got stretched. Which way? Stretched horizontally. Okay, so if you run into trouble with these things, t-chart is a great way to go. This is the double t-chart, but I got to believe that the t-chart is where what you want to be able to do. Okay, we'll try to cover some more of this stuff in class and then also get you going on some problems on WebAssign. All right, so transformations are changes. Translations are slides. Then we also have scalar change changes where we stretch vertically and can also stretch horizontally or shrink vertically or shrink horizontally. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day.